Hello and welcome to the Karate Priest Podcast. I'm your host, Father Daniel Duplantis. I'm a martial artist, musician, airman, and a priest of the Diocese of Homa Thibodeau. One of my other passions in life is teaching, especially teaching about the Catholic faith. Catholicism is a very deep faith. Jesus himself told Peter to put out into the deep for a catch. The most significant answers to life's most important questions often lie deep beneath the surface. Many people have questions about their faith. Through this podcast, my aim is to explore these questions and encounter incredible people along the way. Their stories show that God is constantly at work in our lives every single day, sometimes in the ordinary and sometimes in the extraordinary. Some of the topics treated in this podcast may be sensitive or controversial, but their discussion holds the key to truly living as God created us to live, which is to say that he created us to live in authentic freedom, loving him above all else. Thank you for joining me on this journey of faith. And I hope you enjoy this podcast. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Karate Priest Podcast. I'm Father Daniel Duplantis, aka the Karate Priest. I'd like to start today's episode with a reading from the book of Revelation chapter 7, verse 17. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. I'll start with this passage from Revelation uh, to kind of preface uh, today's topic, which is a week in the life of a priest. Uh, One of the questions that I'm usually asked is, uh, what does a priest do besides celebrate Mass on Sundays? Uh, Sunday is where most people get to see their priest. It might be the only time you get to really see your priest. And so people are usually wondering, what does Father do Monday through Saturday? Uh, What's there to do besides celebrating the normal Sunday Masses? Uh, So what I want to do today is really kind of give a rundown of my weekly schedule day by day, uh, starting with Monday and ending with my weekend Masses. So since most people know weekend Masses tend to kind of cap things off for us, I'm going to start with Monday. Uh, So Monday is my day off. So most priests will take one day off during the week uh, because think of it this way. You know, we're working on Sunday. Sunday tends to be one of our busiest, if not the most busiest day of the week for us. Uh, So with that, we're always encouraged to take another day off during the week to function as like our Sunday, to function as like our day of rest. So we do have time to relax, to spend time with the Lord, um, and we're not burning ourselves out. Uh, and so most priests will take that day off. Uh, and so what I tend to do is I take mine off on Mondays. So after my last Sunday mass, uh, what I'll do is I usually go home to my mom and dad's house. They live about 15 minutes away uh, from the cathedral. And so I'll sleep there Sunday night. So that way I'm kind of away from the parish on my day off. I'm, I'm just kind of out of the office, you know, it won't be disturbed. Um, and then from there, you can really kind of do anything with a day off. Um, it isn't so much a day just to lounge around and do nothing, uh, more so as it is really to just do something recreational in the literal sense of the word. And so what I mean by that is something that recreates you, uh, do, doing something fun, you know, um, a day off is where a lot of priests will, you know, at least in my diocese, because here we are in the heart of Cajun country, a lot of priests will go fishing on their days off. Um, that's something I absolutely love to do is to go fishing. Um, and so usually I'll get with my dad, or if there's another priest, we have a few priests who actually have their own boats here, um, just to go out on the day off and, uh, and go catch some fish. So I love being able to do that. Um, most of my days off though, during the school year, uh, is where I really kind of get into my, my, uh, my love for music. Um, so again, that's my Monday, usually just kind of taking the time to relax, you know, go do something enjoyable. Um, so that's what the day off is for. That's the day to recoup. And you can, for most priests will take, you know, you can pick any day of the week off. Most priests do take Monday since we kind of want that break after Sunday. Uh, I do know some priests also who take Friday off. So for example, my pastor here at the cathedral, Father Jay, uh, he'll take Fridays off. Uh, so I'm usually here on Fridays when he's not, and he's usually here on Mondays when I'm not here at the cathedral. Tuesdays. Uh, so Tuesday is basically my Monday. It's the beginning of kind of like my work week. 
Um, so what happens is from the beginning of the day, um, usually I'll, I'll wake up about six o'clock. Uh, I don't have to wake up terribly early here at St. Francis, uh, but that gives me time to pray if I need to, you know, to do morning prayer, things like that, get a cup of coffee. Um, usually I always start my day with coffee. Um, I call coffee a transfusion for me because I drink so much coffee throughout the day. Um, so by the way, if you're looking for a good coffee, Mystic Monk is a fantastic coffee brand um, that's brewed by Carmelite monks in Wyoming. Check them out. Uh, really, really good stuff. So while the religious hippie runs on Duncan, the karate priest runs on Mystic Monk. Um, so anyway, kind of the first thing of my day on Tuesdays is uh, we have a, a school here at the cathedral, so we do have our own parochial school. So car line is usually at 7.30, so Father Jay and I will stand in the car lines um, to welcome the kids, you know, first thing in the morning. So they get out the car, you know, the teachers are there welcoming them. Uh, we're out there as priests. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have our school masses. Um, so Tuesday is school mass for the lower grades, which I think is pre-K to third grade. Um, and so that mass is usually 8.30 in the morning on Tuesdays. Uh, on the weeks that I don't have the Tuesday school mass, uh, I'll usually visit another local Catholic high school, uh, which is Vanderbilt Catholic High School right here in Homa. Um, and so I'll go there and kind of drop in on the religion classes. Um, they know that if they need me to cover religion for a day, um, they can call me and say, hey, can you come cover religion classes? And so sometimes I do substitute teach for religion classes. Um, or I'll go hear confessions while I'm there as well, uh, which is always super cool when I get a text from the campus minister. And she says, hey, she says, we have kids asking for confession. Uh, when are you coming back? You know, so I'll go there and hear confessions at recess. Um, and the kids always take advantage of that. You know, I'll sit in there for every single recess period. So normally about, you know, probably about two hours total, um, just hearing confessions uh, for the students there. So I like to do that on my Tuesdays. Um, our daily masses at the cathedral are Monday through Thursday at 5.30 p.m. and at 12.05 on Fridays, uh, so about, you know, noon. Um, and so we have confessions half an hour before every mass starts. So for our 5.30 mass, we have confessions that start at 5 o'clock. Uh, for our 12.05 mass, our confessions start at 11.35. Uh, so we do hear a lot of confessions throughout the week as well. Um, and so if I don't have the Tuesday mass, what happens is in the evenings, um, I usually have Taekwondo Tuesdays and Thursday evening. If I don't have the Tuesday evening mass, then I'll usually get to make the six o'clock class, which is our kids class for Taekwondo. Um, so I get to help out teach for that. Uh, and then to also make the seven o'clock adults class. Um, so Tuesday, I normally don't have the daily mass. We have another priest here who normally takes Tuesday. Um, so I'm usually able to make both of those classes for Taekwondo and Tuesday evenings. Wednesday tends to be my really busy day. Um, and so, especially this past semester with COVID, uh, just with things have, how they've worked out. Um, what normally happens is uh, Vanderbilt, the, the, the high school here in Homa, um, they've had masses once a month on a Wednesday, and they have mass at every single class period, so first through eighth period, um, so that all of their students can get to make mass at least once a month. Uh, outside of COVID, they would have a big mass in the gym for all the students. Now they have to go use about five classrooms at a time. Uh, every class period. Uh, and so because there's so many masses, I mean, that's eight masses right there. Uh, it takes a lot of priests to come in and cover those masses. So on Wednesdays, um, usually I'll have at least one, maybe sometimes two of those masses. Uh, I also celebrate the extraordinary form of the Roman rite, so which most people know as the Latin mass. Um, and so with that, I sometimes have a 730 Latin mass in the morning on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesdays and Fridays are the days I tend to really do the, uh, the daily mass for Latin. Um, and then I'll usually help out every other Sunday do a high mass uh, at the parish in Gibson, Louisiana um, for the Latin mass. Uh, so mornings, I usually have a mass. Uh, 1030, I have a nursing home mass, which our nursing homes just started opening back up with COVID. So I have a uh, 1030 nursing home mass every single Wednesday. And then sometimes I'll have that six period mass at Vanderbilt on Wednesdays. Sometimes I'm celebrating several masses. Um, and then I have communion to my shut-ins. Uh, there's some apartments behind the cathedral. I'll go visit them, bring communion to the homebound there. Um, and then sometimes I do have on top of all of those masses already, uh, I'll have the 5.30 evening mass on Wednesday. So there's potentially days where I'll have maybe four daily masses. Um, it's just with COVID, we've been that crunch for time. And so the bishop can give us delegation and can give us faculties to celebrate more masses if necessary. Um, and then Wednesday is usually the weekday that I try to schedule marriage prep meetings. 
Uh, so marriage prep is something that if a couple, they get engaged, um, they contact the church, they, they schedule the, the wedding. Um, and then from there, we meet with them a few times um, to get them ready for not just their wedding day, but to get them ready for their marriage. Um, and so I tend to meet with my couples in person about two or three times and the other meetings they're spending over the course of about six months um, doing a pre cana retreat, uh, visiting with a focus couple who does the focus instrument with them, uh, things like that. And so I meet with them to do the canonical inquiry, um, to, do, uh, to go over their focus results, to kind of unpack the pre cana stuff with them. And then finally, to do the liturgy planning for the wedding itself. So I try to schedule those meetings on Wednesday evenings that tend to be my more free even, uh, uh, evenings throughout the week. And those meetings take about an hour long apiece. Um, so again, that's my Wednesday, sometimes having four masses, communion to my shut-ins and marriage prep. So Wednesday tends to be, uh, you know, really, it really is the hump day I have to get over um, to kind of get to the rest of the week to, to slow things down. Thursdays are a lot like my Tuesday. So it starts with the car line in the morning and school mass. Um, we have a 1030 nursing home mass. Um, then I usually have the daily mass on Thursdays. The days I have Wednesday, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, the days that I have the daily mass here at the cathedral are usually Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, and so with that Thursday, I'll have the mass so I can only make it to the seven o'clock adult class for Taekwondo. Uh, and so Thursday in the, during the rest of the day is where I tend to catch up on what I call my admin stuff. So doing paperwork, homily prep, things like that. Um, Sometimes I get out of the office to go do those things. Um, so we have a coffee shop that's right up the road from the cathedral. So I'll usually go bring my iPad, my computer, whatever I need, go walk up the block, get a, uh, get a coffee there and sit down and start working on my homily, start working on Air Force paperwork and things like that. Uh, so Thursday tends, to be, Thursday tends to be my admin day. Friday um, is Father Jay's day off. So normally I have to cover whatever happens here at St. Francis. But Fridays normally aren't that busy. Um, usually Friday, I'll have the, the 7.30 a.m. Latin Mass in the morning. Uh, I'll have the 12.05 Mass here. Um, every other Friday, we have black belt training. And so this is for all the black belts at Taekwondo or the people who are testing for a black belt um, either that year or the next year. Uh, and so we'll do black belt training on every other Friday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Um, and so for that kind of thing, we're focusing mostly on testing materials. Um, I just tested back in December. I'm not due for another test until I think 2024. So I get to kind of just enjoy the stuff that we do for black belt training without having to stress over um, learning testing materials, which is really cool. So I get to do like the Hapkido. We do some knife training and things like that. Um, we'll do judo. Um, it's a lot of fun for black belt training. Um, and then most of the time in general, my wedding rehearsals are usually Thursday or Friday evenings. Uh, and then the wedding would be the next day. So sometimes my Thursday evenings can be a little hectic. Sometimes Friday evening is a little hectic. Um, in fact, you know, for the month of June, I have three weddings and they're all consecutive weekends. Um, and so my weekends there are going to be very packed. I think two of the rehearsals are going to be on Thursdays. Um, we have some of the weddings on Friday, some are on Saturday. Um, so I, weddings tend to fill up a lot of my time as well. Again, with the marriage prep, with the rehearsals and with the weddings themselves. Um, Saturday tends to be a very easygoing day for me. Uh, every other Saturday, I have the 3 p.m. confessions and the four o'clock vigil mass. So the way that Father Jay and I split the mass schedule on the weekend is one of us will have our evening masses and the other one has our morning masses. We have five masses total at our cathedral. And so we have a 4 p.m. vigil mass on Saturday. Sunday morning, we have seven, nine and 11 a.m. And then we have a 5.30 p.m. mass. So the way we'll split that is one has the 4 p.m. vigil mass on Saturday and the 5.30 mass on Sunday evening. And so whoever has those masses has Sunday morning off. On the flip side, whoever has the morning masses has Saturday pretty much completely off. So we do have a little bit of time off between Saturday and Sunday, depending upon which schedule we have. We just alternate the weekends. Uh, and so again, we have 3 p.m. confessions. So I'll hear confessions for 45 minutes uh, before the vigil mass, so I give myself time to go get ready and actually vest for mass. Um, and so again, the other Saturdays, sometimes I'm completely free. So that's days I can use to go spend time with friends. Um, you know, I have some friends, we'll go to the zoo together, we'll do some taekwondo training together outside of mass, you know. Um, and so that's a day that I can really kind of take and just go do whatever. Um, sometimes I'll do marriage prep on Saturdays to accommodate the work schedules of my couples. 
Uh, we do have a lot of uh, people who get married around here who are either in the medical profession, uh, law enforcement, things like that. And so with their schedule, sometimes I'll have to do marriage prep on Saturday mornings or Saturday evenings. Um, just however I need to accommodate them. Uh, and then finally, coming around to Sundays. Uh, so again, I, I talked about how we alternate the mass schedule. Uh, and so when I have the morning masses, uh, it's 7, 9, and 11 a.m. Uh, and then we have confessions that begin half an hour before those masses as well. So I'm normally hearing confessions for 15 minutes before mass. Uh, and so just with those three morning masses, that's 45 minutes of confessions right there. It's our cathedral. So we tend to get a lot of confessions. Um, on top of that, the weekends that I have the morning masses at the cathedral, I also celebrate the 3 p.m. high mass in the extraordinary form. Uh, and so that's about a 25 minute drive from Homa. Uh, so I'll go celebrate that mass, hear confessions. Um, usually I'll hear confessions before and after mass. We tend to have a lot of confessions at that parish. Um, and so just on Sundays, uh, this past Sunday is a great example. I had the three morning masses, I had the high mass. Um, and so that's four masses right there, uh, totaling about four and a half hours because the, the Latin mass tends to be a little bit longer. And then just with the amount of confessions, I think I spent a total of an hour and a half uh, in the confessional between both parishes. Uh, so Sundays tend to be very busy just with that. And, you know, trying to take time in between masses, maybe go grab a cup of coffee, you know, um, and try to, you know, just relax a bit in between, you know, take a breather. Um, I'm very fortunate that on the Sundays where I have the morning masses, uh, the deacon will normally preach those weekends. Um, that way, uh, because the lectionary is different for the Norvis Ordo than it is for the Latin Mass. And so I'm not having to write two homilies. The deacon will normally preach the weekends I have the morning masses, uh, which is really, really awesome. It's a huge help. Uh, and that way I focus on celebrating the Mass, um, and it kind of gives me a mental break so I could get through that marathon of a day celebrating four Sunday Masses. Um, and so on the Sundays where I have just the evening masses and I have Sunday morning off, um, I love to go grab brunch somewhere. We have some great brunch spots here in Homa. Uh, one of my favorite places is a, 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 about a, you know, a block walk away from the cathedral. Uh, and they have things like Butterfinger stuff, French toast and things like that. And so it's always good to go find something just really awesome to eat. Um, or I'll spend, you know, those mornings with friends until I have to be back for confessions in the evening. Um, and so what also happens on Sundays when I, have the, uh, when I have the evening masses is I'll have friends from Taekwondo who will come to St. Francis and will use the school gym to do some training, um, especially if we have, you know, any of our students who are testing coming up. So the adults will come and a lot of them, they're, they're just good friends of mine anyway. So it's really cool that, you know, we get to just train together and do something we love together. Uh, but we'll work on, you know, sparring, we'll work on things for testing materials, you know. Um, I have some friends who recently joined that are lower belts, and so we'll train them on their testing materials. Um, and then for them, it counts as credit towards their class time because I'm one of the instructors. Uh, so it's really awesome to get to spend Sundays doing those kind of things, you know, uh, really enjoy getting to keep doing Taekwondo outside of class. So that's my specific schedule. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea that, you know, yeah, priests can be busy, you know, uh, even though you don't see us sometimes outside of Sunday Mass, we tend to be very busy. On top of all of those things, there are some generalities that each priest tends to go through. Um, we tend to always have funerals as well, you know, and funerals can just kind of pop up. And so we have to rearrange our schedules based on funerals when those things pop up. Um, priests have spiritual direction, either giving it or receiving it. We're encouraged to have our own spiritual directors. Um, many times we'll give spiritual direction ourselves. Uh, and so we have appointments for those things as well. And so like we have an office here uh, at the parish where people can come meet us in our offices for things like spiritual direction, confession, things like that. Uh, priest gatherings. Uh, we have, you know, different groups of priests we get together. We have priest support groups. Um, and so we'll get together and we'll have socials. You know, we usually get, you know, we'll pick a parish and we'll rotate who's hosting. Um, but we'll do things like barbecues and things like that, you know. So we, we get together as priests for, uh, for what we call fraternity nights, you know, things like that. Meetings. Every priest has meetings. Uh, these things range from deanery meetings, so different groups of the diocese. You have regions within the diocese that get together um, and will meet as a deanery. The parish council, something that every parish has um, to know what's going on in the parish, you know, helping with the administration of the parish. Um, things like the youth group, Knights of Columbus, uh, Ladies Altar Societies, things like that. All these little groups that tend to meet regularly 
um, they'll usually invite the priest to attend as well. And then on top of that, uh, all these things being said, one of the most important things um, that we do as priests throughout the week is pray. Huh, finally, I get to prayer. You know, it, it seems like it goes without saying that priests pray. Um, but I kind of, you know, wrote this this way so that way you can see that, you know, this is a lot of the stuff that we have to do on top of us praying. Uh, and so with prayer, we're encouraged to make a daily holy hour, to take one hour out of our day, either usually in the morning or in the evening, wherever we can make it. Um, so we spend time in prayer with the Lord, you know, usually more silent prayer, um, prayer that we're actually able to find peace and solitude. Um, and so for me, I personally prefer praying in the evenings. It takes a long time for me to get up in the morning and to kind of get rolling. So I pray best in the evenings. Um, and then on top of that, praying the liturgy of the hours. The liturgy of the hours is the official prayer of the church. Uh, it's what every priest, deacon, nun, brother, every seminarian is praying throughout the day. We pray five offices throughout the day. Uh, and so we have the office of readings, which is a movable office. You can really pray that one at any point throughout the day. Uh, morning prayer, daytime prayer, evening prayer, and night prayer are our five offices. Uh, and so with that, um, we're praying all these offices together. Um, and so it, you, know, you could easily spend uh, up to two hours in prayer every day uh, if you kind of average everything together. Uh, again, this is all on top of the masses that we celebrate. Um, so with that, that's a week in the life of a priest. Um, some of these things change, you know, there's, there's some things that, you know, if you're at a parish like I was at St. Thomas, um, you have a younger crowd, you're doing things with the university instead, you know, this is more of a normal parish for me at St. Thomas, I'm sorry, uh, at the cathedral, and so I'm doing more anointing of the sick and things like that, I'm doing more funerals, um, depending upon what type of parish or what type of ministry you're in really dictates what your schedule looks like, um, at the same time, we're always expected, you know, to take care of ourselves as priests, so to take our day off, you know, uh, to take vacation times. In my diocese, priests are given 30 days vacation a year. Uh, and so we're encouraged to take that. We're, uh, we have to make a canonical retreat every year. And so that factors into our, our schedules throughout the year also. Um, and with that, just making sure we're taking care of ourselves with health and wellness also. Uh, we're encouraged to have gym memberships and things like that. In fact, our health insurance for my diocese helps to cover gym memberships. Uh, they want us to be in the best you know, the best shape possible to minister as best as possible, to make sure that we're healthy, that we're happy, we're holy and healthy. We call those the big three H's, happy, holy, and healthy as priests. Um, and so they do encourage us to stay active and things like that, you know, and to, and to actually do things that are fun. You know, we have many priests who have different hobbies. Uh, in the seminary, it was so awesome to see different hobbies that guys have, you know, whether it be athletics, fishing, I was a musician, you know, martial arts. Uh, we have guys who did sewing, cooking, things like that, you know, um, it's always important to have those hobbies as a priest and to find time to do those hobbies. Um, because kind of going back into what I said in the previous episode, these gifts, these talents help make us who we are, and especially as priests. It's so important not to lose ourselves in our gifts uh, in our ministry, but to cultivate those things in our time off, in our spare time, uh, and to be able to really use those things uh, with growing the kingdom of God. So I really hope this episode was more informative than anything else. Um, to really kind of tell you guys, what do we do when you don't see us at Sunday, you know, or when you don't see us at mass on Sunday, you know, we don't just go back into a recharging box, you know, it's not like we have a, you know, a, a charging port or things like that, and then you, you see us again come out on Sundays. Uh, we tend to be very busy, but we tend to do things that help to fill up our, our ministry with things that are really fruitful, really beneficial, um, but also take into account the necessary things that we do from day to day. So with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Stay blessed. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of The Karate Priest. If you enjoyed this podcast, go ahead and like The Karate Priest on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're ever in South Louisiana, come visit me at the Cathedral of St. Francis de Sales in Homa. If you have any questions or comments about the show, you can also email me at thekaratepriest at gmail.com. Your questions are welcomed and may be used in future episodes. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. 
Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please be sure to rate and review this episode. This podcast is produced by Todd Fisher and distributed by Metacortex Publishing. This podcast is copyright. Any previously trademarked or copyright content is used by permission. Information and opinions stated in this podcast should not be construed as medical advice. Please be sure to visit the official website for the International Association of Metatomics at metatomics.org or find us on social media for other unique content.